So when you're looking for the inverse of a function, if you can sort of think about what's going on with the function and spot it, that's uh, the best way uh, to start. And then, but we'll also look at a, a general method as well. So here's uh, a function f of x equals 6x six, six minus 7. And, and the easiest re way really to work out the inverse here is just to think about this and say, well, you know, what's happening here is multiplying by 6 and then and subtracting 7. So times 6 and minus 7. And, and we've talked about the um, shoes and socks idea of taking your uh, putting putting your socks on first and then your shoes. And when you come to undo that, having to take your shoes off first and then your socks off. So here, um, you know, we're going to do this minus 7 operation is undone first, so we're going to change that to plus 7 and then minus 6, divide, times 6 becomes divided by 6 when we work the other way uh, back through the function, so whereas this was 6x minus 7, what we're going to do is go the other way and say well it's uh, whenever I start with over here x plus 7 and then divided by 6, so uh, the inverse function is this 1 6 uh, x plus 7 um, Another way to come to the same uh, result is to think about the role of input and output, actually. When we're thinking about the inverse function, something that undoes the original function, uh, I'm saying, well, like if the original function took us from inputs to outputs, I want the inverse function to take us from uh, outputs uh, back to inputs. So, um, in the opposite direction. So actually, really, if I think of, you know, I started with my instead of my x and I've got out uh, f of x we want to go the other way around so if I had f of x equals 6x minus 7 one thing we could do is to say okay well let's call this output f of x y just to make the, uh, it a bit neater and I'm just going to say okay well if that's the original function the inverse function is exactly the same but with x and y switched around so I'm going to swap x and y and say that's x equals 6y minus 7. The roles of the input and the output are now reversed. And all I've got to do is then rearrange this to be to make y the subject. So we've got 6y equals x plus 7 and y equals 1 6 uh, x plus 7 and that gets us exactly to where we were before saying that uh, the inverse function is 1 6 uh, x plus 7. My new output for the inverse function, f inverse of x, this new output y is one sixth of, uh, of x plus seven um, and we can see that that does work now let's just do one uh, more example then in the same way so let's say I had p of x is equal to two divided by five minus x now and I want to find the inverse of this one so let's write y equals two divided by five minus x switch x and y and get x equals two divided by five minus y now we've just got to rearrange this to make y the subject. I think the easiest thing to do here, you could multiply 3 by 5 minus y and sort that out. Um, I'm going to make life a little bit easier, I think, by uh, taking the reciprocal of each side. Uh, 1 over x equals 5 minus y over 2. Um, and then I'll multiply both sides by 2. Uh, so uh, let's just go up here. That will give me 2 over x equals 5 minus y. Um, and then uh, add let's add the y to both sides and subtract the 2 over x so I get y equals 5 uh, minus uh, 2 over x um, you might also combine that as a single fraction if you wanted to write that as 5x minus 2 over x but either way it doesn't really matter we've got uh, either of those two are equivalent that uh, p inverse of x is uh, well let's use this one 5 minus uh, 2 over x